Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world today, but there's two things that we can be certain of. First of all, we're going to have to poop. Then number two, <laughs> you're going to have to wipe. Failure to do any of those things is going to result in big problems, whether it's just stanky butt or maybe infections from not cleaning yourself upright, or something as horrible as a torn intestine because you tried to hold it in way too long. Any of those aren't fun. But fortunately, there's actually many different ways that we could wipe our behinds if toilet paper is nowhere to be found, given some of these aren't really the best options, but it's probably better than nothing. If y'all have watched my channel for any length of time, you know that normally I like to demonstrate things in videos to show how they work. But in this video, I will not be doing that for obvious reasons. I figured that would be the merciful thing to do for you guys, and I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube for doing gross things. And before we get too deep into the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, the Human Digestive System. The first way that you can wipe your butt when there's no toilet paper is to just use stuff that you already have laying around the house, or you could very easily go pick up today and then set it aside in storage just in case you need it. Baby wipes and personal wet wipes, those are good options for this because a lot of them are already used to wipe behinds anyway. Them being moist, you're probably going to need less of those to get the job done because moisture does help in the cleaning process. Now the big downside to these is, is they're going to be bulky and they're also going to be very expensive. Another thing that you can use is is newspaper and I know a lot of us aren't getting daily newspapers anymore but a lot of us are still probably getting junk mail like your weekly ad mailer some of those the papers that they have in them are that newspaper type material and that's gonna work okay the glossy type paper probably isn't gonna work as well. Uh, you can use your imagination as to why there, but there's other things that may have that same paper type, things like sales catalogs or even old phone books. Then you can use other kinds of junk mail as well. In all reality, wiping your butt is probably one of the best things that you can do with all of those stupid credit card offers that keep flooding your mailbox. Books can be another viable option, just don't use anything too useful, like don't use any of your survival books or anything like that for this purpose. For things like Excel 2000 for Dummies or some pretentious political autobiography, I can't think of anything better that you could use those for. And y'all, I don't normally do things like this in videos anymore, but if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and consider subscribing to the channel, that would really help make this video number one and number two, at least among other prepper videos that cover this topic. Now, kind of getting away from paper, you can also use worn out clothes to wipe your rear. Good candidates for this are going to be holy socks, holy underwear, because really there's not a whole lot that you can do with those, except for use them for cleaning purposes, whether it's personal cleaning or cleaning around the house or other things. And then also, if you have like shirts or pants that are so worn out, they're so ho holy that you can't do anything else with them, then using them for cleaning isn't a bad option. Then there's other fabrics as well. If you have fitted sheets that don't fit anymore, instead of throwing those away, go ahead and fold them up, set them aside for a rainy day so that you can use them in case you need them to wipe your butt. One advantage that fabric has over paper products is that if necessary, they can be cleaned and reused. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, gross, no, get rid of it. But if we're in a really long-term situation, you might have to make things last longer than you would otherwise, and being able to clean those types of rags could help you do that. You're going to want to have things like calcium hypochlorite that you can make bleach solutions for disinfecting purposes, uh, clothes washing detergent, or maybe even a lot of dish soap, some buckets, a washboard, long rubber gloves, not the wrist length nitrile stuff, but the long kitchen gloves, uh, rubber, plastic aprons, face masks, goggles, because you don't want that stuff getting all over you. And probably a good process to follow when cleaning stuff like that would be to do what folks do with cloth diapers. Start off by rinsing them off. To rinse them off, you could use something like um, a super soaker or a garden sprayer. 
if you don't have like pressurized running water. Then after that, get some hot water, detergent, clean them in there, rinse them off again, and then let them air dry. Now, any water that you use for that purpose, you're gonna wanna treat it the same way that you would waste, so keep it away from people, keep it away from water sources. Getting back to paper products, another thing that you can use is Kleenexes, although I really wouldn't recommend doing that all that much because they're not very durable and you'd be trying to clean yourself up and then, hello, the, that's not fun at all. And another problem with Kleenexes is you're just trading one expensive bulky paper product for another. But one very good option are compressed towels. These are talked about a lot in the prepper community. They're basically these little tablets. You put them in water and then they unfold into a full size, kind of like little towel or rag. And what's good about them is they're very lightweight, they're portable, so they're gonna be a good choice for a bug out bag. Or also, if you just wanna store a whole lot of them, you can do that because they really don't take up that much space. Also, the fabric that they're made out of is pretty good. It's gonna be stronger than things like toilet paper and paper towels, but probably not as strong as like an actual rag. Like you can tear it relatively easily if you wanted to. Now, one very good thing about these is that while cleaning, since you had to dip them in water to get them to kind of unfurl, they're already gonna be moist, which is gonna help with the cleaning process, so you're gonna need less of them to get the job done. Another way that you can keep your behind clean if there's no toilet paper is to use water-based methods. But days are good examples of this. Of course, these are gonna need to be pre-installed. They're also gonna be reliant on water utilities actually being up and running. They're gonna be a good option if we have another situation like we did in the spring of 2020, where everybody's going and panic buying toilet paper, throat punching each other to get the last pack and things like that. But utilities are still up and running. I know that a a lot of us in the United States, myself included, aren't really all that crazy about sitting on the toilet and get shot in the butt with a cold blast of water. But it turns out, I think they're actually pretty hygienic, although it's still not something I'm going to be all that excited and in a hurry to put into my home. If you want an off-grid bidet, then you can use something like a garden sprayer with clean water in it. That's an idea that I got from a lady named Jane Austen, also known as Survivor Jane. She came up with something called the Heine Hydrant, which is basically just that. It's a garden sprayer with water and some fragrances in there that you can use to clean yourself. This sprayer is by Roundup. It says it's the only sprayer that we'll ever need, hopefully so, and it meets all of your spraying needs, challenge accepted. But when it comes to using something like this, you definitely wanna make sure that it has not been used to spray things like pesticides or other kinds of chemicals because that could cause some pretty rough irritation down in that neck of the woods. If you have any squeeze bottles laying around the house, like what you would drink Gatorade or something like that out of, then you can use those as a miniature version of the Heine Hydrant. If you live in an area that gets a lot of snow, then you can use snowballs for that purpose. Although I think if I were to try that, since I'm not really into the cold all that much, it'd probably make me do my best Obi-Wan Kenobi impression. Hello there. And of course you can also use just regular water for that purpose. Just be aware, once again, keep it away from people. Don't do that in like a lake or a pond or stream that people use to get their water out of. Then if you're in really bad straits, there are some natural resources that you can use to wipe your behind if you just don't have anything else. And leaves are going to be a good candidate for that. When selecting leaves, you want to pick some that are a little bit larger and softer. Things like mullein, plantain leaves, also magnolia, although it's probably not the softest necessarily, maple leaves, and things like that. You also want to be very careful to avoid things like poison ivy and poison oak. I can't even imagine <laughs> what that would be like uh, several minutes after. Good grief, just that feeling of doom where you're like, oh no. Uh, that, that would not be a good position to be in. Corn cobs and corn husks are another thing that people have historically used before, at least before they started nailing the farmer's almanac into the side of the outhouse. But then also other things like, good lands, seashells. 
I know it was a joke in Demolition Man. <laughs> he doesn't know what the three seashells are for. <laughs> but historically, they've actually been used for that purpose, along with other things like smooth rocks, sticks, just definitely be sure to get all the bark off first for obvious reasons. And then there's some other things to consider. Like a lot of these methods, they're not going to get you as clean as modern methods will, and they might not be as sanitary for your hands either. So you want to have plenty of clean water that you can wash with, also plenty of soap, hand sanitizer, things like that. Then also, there might be a situation where you can no longer use your normal toilet, so having a backup like a camp toilet would be a good idea. Or even something as simple as a bucket with a trash bag over it with a pool noodle around the edge. And if you want to see how to do that with a pool noodle along with some other pool noodle hacks, go ahead and click on this video. Thank you all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.